Hello everyone. In this episode I will continue with the build of this module and I will also make a demo of how it works. This module uses a couple of 3D printed parts, key tops for the Sherry MX keyboard switches and also a lens for the 7 segment display. The key tops are printed on my Prusa Mini using PLA filament. The lens is printed on my Anycubic Photon using transparent resin that I have tinted with some green ink since the 7th segment display uses green LEDs. The parts come out quite dull from the printer, so they are coated with a gloss varnish and polished to a sheen. I use the same method of surface treatment here as I used for the OLED lens in my base body project. I made the first prototype PCB to check the design. And it works fine from an electronics and software point of view. But I wasn't happy with the panel layout and the mechanical robustness. So I fixed that and made a second board spin. So when the new PCB arrived, it was time to put everything together. I started by soldering all SMT components. And apart from that, you will need the front panel, a Raspberry Pi Pico, MIDI DIN connector, seven segment displays, the Sherry keys, optocoupler, power connector, three-way switch, key tops, electrolytic capacitors, diodes, three millimeter LEDs, tactile switch, and the Donkey Kong jacks. So let's get started and build this.
After that it's time to glue the lens to the front panel. I use regular white wood glue for this. Next step is to connect the 5 pin DIN jack for the MIDI. It only uses 2 pins, but the leads are polarized, so we need to connect it the right way. And the final step is to upload the software. To do that you need to connect the Pico to the USB port on your computer. Press and hold the reset and boot cell buttons and release the reset button while you still hold the boot cell pressed. The Pico will show up as a USB drive on your computer and you can drag and drop the .uf2 file into that folder. The Pico will automatically restart and start executing the program. And that's it. So, it's time for a short demo of the three sync modes. And the first one is the external sync. And at startup the display shows the software version. First of all we need to connect the clock source. In my case I'm using the square wave output from my LFO. The module will display the BPM value of the input clock. And we can adjust the tempo by using the frequency knob on the LFO. Now we can connect the reset and clock outputs to our sequencer. There are five clock divider outputs to choose from. The flashing red LED means that we are in paused mode. The clock and reset outputs are held in their present state. And if we hit the play button, the clocks will start and the green LED will turn on. If we hit the stop button once, it will go into paused mode again. If we hit stop again, the module will go into stop mode, where it will output a reset signal. Next we have the internal sync mode, where we can set the clock rate using tap tempo. We will not need the external clock source anymore, so we can disconnect that.
The tempo is set by tapping the play button eight times. The software will calculate an average of the time between each tap and set the tempo accordingly. The clock outputs and stop and play button work the same way as for the external sync mode. And finally we have the MIDI sync mode. In this case the stop and play buttons are not used. Instead the MIDI real-time messages are decoded and the flashing symbol on the display shows that we are in post mode. As soon as we go into play mode the display will show the tempo. And as you can see, it's very accurate. You can use the tape deck controls of your MIDI device or door to start, stop or rewind. All the files for this project can be found on my GitHub. But the software is still work in progress, so be aware of that. The main missing feature is that the transitions between modes is not seamless, and the source code needs to be refactored and cleaned up a bit. With that, I want to say thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.